Hi folks, welcome to the weekend and also to the first weekly update in a few weeks or with holidays and so on. I won't try to catch up on all of my reading since we last did one of these videos. You can just watch the monthly recap for that when it arrives. But what have I been reading this week? I finished The House of Rumour by Jake Arnott, which is a strange and wonderful book. It's not my normal reading jam at all. It's not overtly science fiction. It's not set in the future. There's no spaceships or advanced technology, no aliens, or actually there might be aliens. There's no time travel and uh, nothing like that. We are firmly earthbound. The structure of the novel is unusual. There's no linear plot, arguably there's no plot at all, in fact. There are 21 chapters and each is a vignette based thematically on one of the main sequence of 21 tarot cards, although I didn't actually realise that until after I'd read the book. Each chapter, each vignette is linked in some way to at least one other via one or more characters. Some vignettes pick up a clear thread from an earlier one or even a later one and others pull at a thread that was only briefly hinted at before. If I step right back, I can imagine finding this structure really annoying, but somehow I was sucked right in. There's a large cast of bit players. We start in 1930s California with a cabal of science fiction writers who are all enjoying the golden age. Some are recognisably real figures, such as Robert Heinlein, L. Ron Hubbard, Jack Williamson, and others are either fictional or so obscure that I've never heard of them. In fact, that ambiguity, that blurring between the real and the imaginary, the certain and the unclear, is a recurring theme in the book. From those guys in California, we then touch on World War II espionage and counter-espionage, UFO sightings, the aliens I referred to earlier, maybe, conspiracies, the occult, cults, double dealings, and much much more. It's a very unusual tapestry of a book. The warp and the weft of the diverse but connected tales is well done, I thought. The writing is quite dreamlike, in fact. It's like that kind of fuzzy state between sleeping and waking, and really quite beautiful in a beguiling sort of way. I did enjoy it, but I'm not sure I can fully articulate why. It had none of the things that I normally like in a science fiction book. I'm therefore unsure if I should be recommending it to you or not. Or at least if I am, I'm unsure on what basis I'm recommending it. You have to make your own mind up. Give it a try. I've also got through most of Roger Zelazny's Lord of Light, which is the final book that I started from July's TBR pile. Uh, I'm about probably about 80% of the way through it now, but I did come close to a DNF in the first 50 pages, but I have stuck with it and I think I'm glad that I did. I'm intrigued to know where it's going and what might be revealed in the final 20%. More on that next week. And my major challenge is going to be how to describe what the book was about and what I thought of it without revealing anything too spoilery. We, we shall see. I am also about three quarters of the way through Surface Detail, this time on an audiobook. I was complaining a little bit last week in my community post that there were too many threads for me to keep hold of but they are now uh, beginning to come together to resolve in a crescendo of plot. Going in, I remembered almost nothing about this book, despite reading it at least once before. Uh, I'm almost at the point where I can do a culture ranking video. I just have one more to reread after this, The Hydrogen Sonata. Annoyingly, my free hours on Spotify have run out this month, so I either have to wait until they renew in a couple of weeks to finish Surface Detail, or I can cough up a credit to finish it on Audible, sticking with the audiobook, or I could, of course, just pick up the physical book, as I obviously do have it. Channel stuff then, subscribers are at 3034, which is up 37 since the last time I did one of these videos a few weeks back. It was interesting to see it flatline or even decrease actually as I stopped putting out content whilst I was away on the holes. Anyway, if you're one of those 37 or if you have merely stumbled across my channel for the first time today, then a big welcome to you. I'm John and I focus on reading, collecting and waffling on about science fiction books, old and new. Comment of the week this week was from Michael Grossberg, who left a comment on a video from earlier this year on the book showcasing Ian M. Banks' culture drawings. I was waxing lyrical about it, and Michael has a different view. He was disappointed by the lack of commentary or context about the drawings. Of course, Banks would have to have been much more deliberate about leaving records, or he'd need to still be alive to give us that context to have made it possible. Michael's of the opinion that Banks would not have wanted this to be published in this form. I don't know if I go that far. I do enjoy having the book just from a completist point of view, but actually now that I think of it, I don't think I've opened it since I recorded the video. Thanks to Michael for taking the time to leave a comment, and of course to all of you that do the same. It's always very much appreciated. Let's take a little look at what was on the channel this week. On Sunday there was another episode of Bookshelf Bingo where the bingo balls of fate, with the assistance of the Decision Dice of Destiny, pick most of my reading for the coming month. 
I'm really excited by the selections for this month. I just need to get through Lord of Light and I'll get stuck in. On Wednesday, there was a brief video introducing a new reading challenge, Life Story, in which I will read a science fiction short story from each year of my life to date, starting way back in 1971. In that video, I also run through the first bunch of stories that I'll read, taking us to 1979. There are also some goofy pictures of me as a kid, if you want a giggle. I had hoped to recap July's reading too during the week, but I've just been too busy at work and that has put the mockers on that video, unfortunately, for now anyway. I confess I haven't watched a great deal of booktube content this week. I've been busy one way or another and we've had house guests to boot. I did watch Matt at Science Fiction Reads go through his recent reads and a little book haul, but that's about it. I have, though, got sucked into various snippets of US election coverage on YouTube, which from an outside observer's perspective is interesting and oddly compelling for lots of reasons. It's probably not good for my brain or my stress levels. I should just watch more booktube. On the book buying front, I've taken delivery of one or two things in the last few days. I have the new Adam Roberts book, Lake of Darkness, and also a couple of Paul McCauley books to add to my growing collection of his work. August's book haul video is shaping up nicely. There are 34 books currently on the to be hauled stack and on sunday i'm meeting whitney fellow science fiction booktuber who is in the uk on vacation for a couple of weeks and we are going to go book shopping in london she's also my courier for a few books that i ordered for delivery in the us so there will definitely be a bit of an influx of books next week let's take a look ahead so on the channel in the coming week there will be that look back at july's reading I'll reprise a mini review for each book that I read during the month and tier rank them, ultimately declaring a book of the month. There are two or three strong contenders for that particular honour, I think. The only caveat I would offer is that I'm pretty busy this weekend. I am aiming for Sunday, but it could be Monday or even Tuesday before that video appears. We shall see. I also intend to take a closer look at my collection of Ken McLeod books, which is now complete, I think, certainly for novels. I think there's one more obscure title that I am missing, a special edition. Uh, but, but of the books that I do have, I've read about a quarter of the collection, so this will, not, this will be an opportunity for me to familiarise myself more with the others and to share them with you and to identify which ones I might like to read next. I'm aiming for Thursday for that one. Beyond that, longer range, I actually don't know uh, what's going to be coming. I need to do a bit of content planning. I'd like to do another decade video, either revisiting the 1950s or picking another decade. I'd like to do more space opera deep dives. I might be brave and do a look at New Wave. There's a lot I'd like to do, uh, but those will take a bit of research and preparation, so I need to be realistic about how many of those I can fit into a typical month. Reading wise, once I'm done with Lord of Light, I think I shall tackle Service Model by the extremely prolific Adrian Tchaikovsky. I have heard mixed reports about this book, so we shall see how I get on with it. I think it's quite a light read, so I should get through it pretty quickly and have time for Big Planet, which will be my first Jack Vance read. And after that, if there's time next week, then I'll probably read a few of the short stories in my 1970s life story picks. And if I really get through those, then I'll just I'll just grab something off the TBR pile that, um, that takes my fancy. As always, thank you for watching. Have a super weekend. Until next time, goodbye for now.